Thorium is a silvery metal that quietly sits in the Earth's crust, far more common than uranium, yet much less famous. Did you know that thorium was discovered back in 1828, long before anyone imagined nuclear reactors? It was even used in gas lamp mantles in the 19th and 20th centuries because it glowed brilliantly when heated. People had thorium in their homes without realizing it could one day be a candidate to power entire cities. Doesn't it feel strange that such a powerful energy source was hiding in plain sight? On its own, thorium cannot sustain a chain reaction, which is why you cannot simply drop it into a reactor and expect energy to flow. But when thorium is bombarded with neutrons, it undergoes a transformation into uranium-233, which can split and release enormous energy. Each time an atom of uranium-233 fissions, it gives off heat, radiation, and more neutrons, and those neutrons go on to split more at the heat is used in the same way as in a coal or gas plant boiling water to make steam and spin turbines have you ever thought about how similar our power systems are whether we burn coal or split atoms since in both cases the end goal is simply spinning a turbine one of the less known facts about thorium is how abundant it is while uranium must be mined in special regions thorium is widespread often found alongside rare earth elements in ordinary rocks Estimates suggest there is enough thorium on Earth to provide energy for tens of thousands of years. Another surprising fact is that thorium reactors were seriously tested in the 1966 at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the United States. They worked, but the world chose uranium because it was better suited for producing plutonium for weapons during the Cold War. Doesn't it make you wonder how differently our energy systems might look today if history had chosen thorium over uranium? Thorium has other hidden strengths. Its waste products are shorter lived compared with uranium waste, meaning they decay to safe levels in hundreds of years instead of tens of thousands. It is also much harder to use thorium fuel cycles to make nuclear weapons, which is why some scientists describe it as proliferation resistant. And here is a little known fact. India, with some of the world's largest thorium reserves, has long dreamed of becoming a thorium energy leader, even developing an ambitious three-stage nuclear program where thorium plays the starring role. Could thorium become the foundation for national energy independence in countries rich in this element? The challenges are real. Specialized reactors such as molten salt reactors are needed to make the thorium cycle efficient, and these are not yet widespread. Handling uranium-233 is tricky because it emits a particularly strong kind of radiation, including gamma rays, that requires heavy shielding. And since most of the world's nuclear infrastructure was built for uranium, switching to thorium would mean massive investments. But the possibility remains. Thorium could provide a safer, cleaner, and almost inexhaustible energy source if humanity decides to pursue it. So here is a final question for you. If you could choose, would you prefer to invest in thorium today, risky money on developing new technologies, or would you wait, hoping someone else takes the first leap, even if that means losing decades of potential clean energy? Thorium-232 is not itself fissile, but can be converted into uranium-233, which is capable of sustaining a chain reaction. This makes thorium a fertile material, requiring an external neutron source to become useful as fuel. Its abundance in Earth's crust is about three times greater than uranium, ensuring long-term availability. So, <laughs> thorium also does not require isotopic enrichment, unlike uranium-235, which simplifies fuel preparation. The conversion of thorium into uranium-233 releases the potential for large-scale sustainable energy, these characteristics make thorium highly appealing as a next-generation nuclear fuel. Example, India has developed the Advanced Heavy Water Reactor specifically to exploit thorium's natural advantages. Analogy. Thorium is like uncooked rice. It must first be boiled, converted, before it becomes nourishing fuel for energy. When thorium-232 absorbs a neutron, it becomes thorium-233 which undergoes beta decay to form protactinium-233. Protactinium-233 then decays into uranium-233, which is fissile and capable of sustaining nuclear fission. This transformation process is called breeding as fertile thorium is bred into fissile uranium, 
Neutron economy in a reactor must be carefully balanced to maintain this cycle effectively. If too many neutrons are lost, the breeding process slows, reducing efficiency. A well-designed reactor ensures continuous production of U-233 from thorium. Example, molten salt reactors allow thorium to continuously absorb neutrons and breed new uranium-233 within the liquid fuel. Analogy, it's like raising a caterpillar into a butterfly. The initial form is not useful for flying, but the transformation makes it capable of powerful work. Several reactor designs have been proposed to utilize thorium efficiently, including molten salt reactors, heavy water reactors, and high-temperature gas-cooled reactors. Molten salt reactors are considered the most promising because fuel is dissolved in liquid salts, allowing constant reprocessing. Heavy water reactors are capable of operating with thorium alongside a fissile starter, such as uranium or plutonium. High temperature reactors can burn thorium-based fuel at greater efficiency while producing hydrogen as a byproduct. Each design carries trade-offs in terms of complexity, safety, and scalability. Research into thorium reactors continues worldwide to determine which designs are most practical for deployment. Example, China has been developing a thorium molten salt reactor prototype in Wuwei, Gansu province. Analogy, choosing a thorium reactor is like picking the right type of engine, diesel, electric, or hybrid, each suited to different goals. When uranium-233 undergoes fission, it splits into smaller nuclei and releases about 200 million electron volts of energy per event. This energy comes primarily in the form of heat, which is transferred into coolant systems. The heat is then used to boil water into steam, which spins turbines to generate electricity. Compared to fossil fuels, nuclear fission provides millions of times more energy per kilogram of fuel. Thorium's conversion into U-233 allows it to take advantage of this dense energy release. This means that small amounts of thorium fuel can power large cities. Example, one ton of thorium could theoretically provide as much energy as 200 tons of uranium or 3.5 million tons of coal. Analogy, fission is like snapping open a compressed spring. The tiny structure holds immense energy that bursts out when released. Thorium-based reactors are designed with intrinsic safety features not always present in uranium reactors. For example, molten salt reactors operate at atmospheric pressure, eliminating risks of high-pressure explosions. Because the fuel is liquid, there is no possibility of a meltdown unlike in solid fuel reactors. Thorium fuel cycles also generate fewer long-lived radioactive isotopes, reducing risks during accidents. Some designs include a freezed plug that melts in overheating situations, passively draining fuel into safe storage. These mechanisms make thorium reactors far less prone to catastrophic failures. Example, if power is lost, a molten salt thorium reactor can automatically drain its fuel, stopping fission without human intervention. Analogy, it's like building a fireplace where the fire extinguishes itself if it gets too hot, Nuclear waste from thorium cycles is shorter-lived compared to waste from uranium or plutonium reactors. Thorium produces fewer transuranic elements like plutonium, americium, and curium, which are the most problematic for long-term storage. Most of the waste decays to safe levels within a few hundred years instead of tens of thousands. This makes waste management and geological storage much less challenging. And geologic... Thorium's clean fuel cycle is one of its strongest environmental advantages. Countries seeking sustainable nuclear energy value this reduced burden of nuclear waste. Example, a thorium reactor's waste becomes safe to handle within centuries, whereas conventional waste may remain toxic for 100,000 years. Analogy, using thorium is like replacing non-biodegradable plastic with compostable packaging. It leaves far less legacy for future generations. A major concern with nuclear energy is the diversion of fissile material into weapons. While uranium-233 can theoretically be weaponized, its production from thorium often includes uranium-232 impurities. Uranium-232 emits intense gamma radiation, making it hazardous to handle and easily detectable. This contamination complicates weaponization, discouraging its misuse. Compared to uranium-235 or plutonium-239, Thorium fuel cycles present far lower risks of proliferation. This is why thorium is considered a safer global energy option in political terms.
Example, U.S. weapons research in the 1950 Cess abandoned uranium-233 because of dangerous uranium-2032 contamination. Analogy, it's like putting invisible ink in currency. Any attempt to steal or forge it becomes immediately obvious. Thorium is widely distributed in the Earth's crust and often occurs alongside rare earth minerals such as monazite. Large deposits are found in India, Australia, Brazil, and the United States. Its abundance means that many countries could achieve energy independence using thorium. Unlike uranium, thorium does not need enrichment, reducing the cost and complexity of fuel preparation. Mining thorium as a byproduct of rare earth elements further increases its accessibility. This ensures that thorium could serve as a stable global energy source for centuries. Example, India's thorium reserves are estimated to be around 360,000 metric tons, enough for centuries of power generation. Analogy, thorium is like fresh water, widely available and more evenly distributed compared to scarce uranium wells. Despite its advantages, thorium reactors still face technical, economic, and regulatory challenges. Building new reactor designs requires significant capital investment and decades of testing. Global infrastructure for nuclear fuel processing is still heavily oriented toward uranium, slowing adoption of thorium. Political and public perceptions of nuclear energy also play a role in delaying progress. However, as energy demand increases and climate concerns grow, thorium may gain more attention as a safe, abundant option. Continued research and pilot projects worldwide show that thorium energy has strong long-term potential. Example, China's Thorium Molten Salt Project is one of the world's leading efforts to commercialize thorium energy. Analogy, thorium is like a powerful new instrument waiting to be tuned. It has the capacity to change the entire energy orchestra once perfected.